So cases of measles do continue to climb. You know, recently with the death of that young girl in Lubbock, on top of that, we've seen influenza cases continue to pick up. I'm joined today by our medical expert, Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott & White. Good to see you. Good to see you, thank you. So let's talk about what steps people can take to protect themselves from the measles virus and yeah. minimize any risk of infection. Yeah, it's sad to hear about that unvaccinated girl in Lubbock who passed away. There's a lot of measles out there right now, 124 cases. That's double what it was two weeks ago. So it's continuing to rise. I worry about that quite a bit. Now the vaccine is highly effective. If you've been vaccinated, you're not likely to get anything with this. If anything, you might get a mild case of measles, but most folks are totally protected with lifetime immunity. So the vaccines work very well. And there's a lot of that stuff going on right now. So we need to pay attention who's vaccinated and who's not. Why is it so contagious? It's said to be the most contagious virus on the planet. It's because when these, it's in the air, if you have measles and walk through a room, that air can still be contaminated for another two hours. If you touch a doorknob and you have measles or touch a table, they can stay alive there for another two hours. Highly contagious. So that's the problem with it. Uh, once it's out there, it can spread. And it's actually said that if somebody with measles walks to a crowded room, 90% of the people in that room who are unvaccinated will get the measles. Highly contagious. Now, how does vitamin A potentially help with the measles? Yeah, vitamin A is an, has some anti-inflammatory properties, and so there's some ideas that may help somewhat. Uh, you don't get, want to take too much, milligram at the most, but uh, vitamin A might have some benefit. Of course, the best is to be vaccinated and stay away from the sick folks. Now, where are we at as far as flu numbers? I feel like, <laughs> I think I know at least a handful of people who were ill in the month of February. It's said that this is the worst year for the flu in 30 years. Incredible. We had a peak in December. It came down a bit in January. It's back up again with a second peak. We don't usually see that. 24 million cases reported, 310,000 hospitalizations and over 13,000 deaths right now from measles. And it's still going up. So I worry about measles, worry about flu. COVID's still out there. Fortunately, those cases are fairly mild right now, but a lot of viruses out there in the air. Now, I know we've been talking about people being, you know, this is flu season, right? You got spring break around the corner. Um, I'm, we're looking at just a couple of weeks away. So what are some of your concerns with spring breakers and these viruses? Yeah, I hope that if you have any kind of viral symptoms at all, you'll stay home. Because if you have something, you're likely to spread it out there. I worry about that. If you're traveling, well, be careful around people coughing or sneezing. I worry about that. Masks, they're not very popular, but they help some indeed. And washing your hands. If that virus is on a table and you touch it and you wash your hands, you're going to be okay. And you have to wash your hands for 20 seconds. That's a longer time than most people actually do. And actually, if you haven't had a flu shot and if you're not vaccinated for measles, it's not too late. Those viruses can respond to those vaccinations and it just takes a week or so for the vaccine to work. So consider that if you're going out for spring break. If you're not going out, consider it anyway because vaccines work and those diseases can be deadly. Thank you for your insight, Dr. Winter. Good to see you again. Now we know a lot of you have questions you. about the measles, so we took those questions to an expert and you can watch what she had to say on our TV streaming app, WFAA Plus, right now.